What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Tell the Tape. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And today's episode of Tell the Tape, I'm going to be breaking down Cheeto Vera versus Corey Sanhagen. Guys, these are two guys that are in the top five. They're looking to be the next challenger for guess who? That's right, Triple C. On this episode of Tell the Tape, I want to be dissecting their strengths and their weaknesses. What is it that makes them good? But what is it also that gives them an opportunity to get exposed? Anyhow, this wouldn't be possible without our sponsor, Cookie Co. With all natural ingredients, you guys like chocolate chip, you guys love peanut butter, you guys like strawberry cookies and creams. Guys, when I like to indulge, I do it right. That's right. You guys find a local store near you, go to cookieco.com and get your cookie on. Enough talk, let's take it to the big screen. So the tell of the tape, would you look at this? 19 fights, 27 fights. Eight submissions, eight KOs, seven KOs, three submissions, 5'11", 5'8", 75.5 reach advantage. It is crazy that he has a longer reach advantage than Corey at 69.5, and they're both here. I mean, these guys are kind of similar in a lot of things. And now I would really like to break these guys down in divisions on their strengths and weaknesses. I would like to start off with none other than Cheeto Vera. Looking at Cheeto Vera, these are some of the strengths that I found, obviously watching him for such a long time. And this dude's got, this dude's got ridiculous fights. 20 UFC fights. <laughs> Something that he does have, and I will give him that, is he's got experience. I only have 12. But I also have two belts. Anyhow, has never been knocked out in a UFC career. In other words, what Cheeto does have is he has durability. He's a very, very durable fighter. And I will tell you, dude, that dude is very durable. Dangerous submissions game. Again, this guy, what I do like about Cheeto too is like he'll be in, he'll be in guard and he'll start throwing elbows up top and start looking for his triangles or arm bars. You know, vicious, vicious kicks. Won two of last three fights via head kick KOs. I mean, this guy's using every limb in his body. Anyhow, I feel like I'm stroking his ego a little too much. Now, let's get down to the real stuff, his weaknesses. Consistency. He'll get super close, like that fight with Sonya Dong, and he'll always lose. The other one, he starts too late. Like he really starts to move as a fight goes on. He's like, oh, I might really fight. Oh, here goes a head kick. But this is one of his biggest downfalls right here. Can he pick that up in the beginning? Absorb more strikes per minute landed in UFC career. In other words, he's taking more hits than he's actually given. But he's also been having the opportunity, the ability to actually finish fights. And the other thing too is his tactical game. He fights everybody the same. And if somebody can't figure him out in that way, I just, I, I don't, I personally don't get it. I think the, the biggest reason why I'm good at what I do is because I got a safety net, it's called wrestling. I'm able to, boom, I'm a good striker, I'm a good tactician, and wrestling is my safety net. Or I can use it to, to drown you. All right, guys, so there you saw it, but you know what, enough talk. Let me show you guys what I'm showing on video. Let's go. So let's start off Cheeto Vera versus Sean O'Malley. Again, guys, Cheeto Vera, I'm sorry, Sean O'Malley and Corey Sahang are about the same height. So it's curious, uh, I'm curious to see a little bit of this tape so we can see what is it that Cheeto actually did good on this fight. And it was boom, right there. Able to catch distance, take distance, and then hit, hitting, hitting O'Malley in the peronal nerve there. O'Malley was going south by quite a bit. Yeah, but all of a sudden, because of all the investments that he did, he said, Sean O'Malley started getting the stanky leg. Do you stink? Do the stanky leg? Do the stanky leg? And yep, this is something I like about Cheeto. And you know what, Herb Dean, you should have let you should have let him get on him a little bit more. You know, look, boom, one. Like they, I don't know if they tell Herb Dean take care of our princess, but I, anyhow, I thought Cheeto Vera did a really good job of just really throwing those elbows and those punches. But the, but. The, Anyhow, he could have took a little more damage there, but then that's what it is too. In the beginning, if you watch this fight, if you watch this fight and when it happened is Cheeto was losing this fight. 
And there was that lateral movement that I was talking about where Cheeto is it that he has really, really trouble. He had it with Dominic Cruz. He had it with Frankie Edgar. The, the side to side motion, this guy, he's, he's, a, he's a little funky on his feet. But as soon as he got him to really step forward, this is where this guy turns it up. And Frankie shouldn't have never let him in that close, the fight zone. And he was able to feed Frankie Edgar, man, some freaking athlete's foot. That was one hell of a shot, I'll give him that. You know, round one of Dominic. He will throw. He's not gonna play. He's not gonna he's not gonna point fight you. When Cheeto throws, he throws. Boom. And then that's how he catches. That's how he catches him. But notice how he smoked this. Notice how he smoked that hand. And then this is a bad habit. This is the same, this is the same way I knocked out Dominic. But Dominic came to this side. And he does that a lot. So all you guys, oh my God, Dominic's footwork. His footwork, he's easy to catch. Cause not just that, but he leans too damn much. You should never be too far out of your cylinder because this is the stuff that actually happens. Night, night. Boa noite. Bah. Yep. Same thing, same thing happened to Kamaru. These hands, you separate them too much, boom. Yeah, that rearranged his nose. Can you frame that up real quick? And rearrange Dominic's nose. Look at his nose. Look at his nose. And watch. Look at turn. Boom. Let it go a little bit. Frame it. <laughs> look at it now. Look at it now. Go ahead. Keep going. You see what I'm saying? He curved it for him. Wow. Okay. Gets up top. And that's all she wrote. Surprised Dominic didn't get up and say it was a horrible stoppage. You know? These look notorious for that. And look at DC, look at DC, dude, I know DC, man, he's just like, damn, man, for everything that Dominic Cruz has said about this, man, I know this man is like, dude, finally, anyhow, whatever, I could be wrong. And those are some of, uh, those are some of Chino Vera's strengths, now let's look at some of his weaknesses, let's, let, let's expose this cat. Lateral movements, you see what I'm saying? Blitzing. Mm -hmm. He's almost like, where do I stay put, uh. The, the, the good thing about it is Dominic doesn't have power, but overreacting. And I felt like this whole fight with Dominic Cruz, I felt like Dominic did a really good job of, I, I had him winning that fight. And then boom, easy takedowns for Dom. Easy, easy takedowns. Like, like that right there, you should be able to defend that. Yep, a good setup by Dom though, but still, be able to hip high, get, get, get that right hip over, and you'd be good. So this is what I was talking about earlier, guys. I mean, look at how much more active Cruz is than, uh, than, than Vera. You know what I'm saying? Look at that, 54 out of 120. You know, it's just the, the, from 32% to 45%. And this is round two, guys. Ladder of movements are, is one thing, I think the biggest thing that Corey could expose. So Corey could dance, you know, and he could set traps against the guys like Cheeto. But he did get the knockout. He did knock out Frank Yeager and he did knock out Dominic Cruz. So without further ado, let's get down to the Sandman, Corey Sanhagen. So the tell, the take, the strengths for a guy like Corey Sanhagen. His biggest thing right here. This man is unpredictable. Throwing flying knees, elbows, crazy with the submissions. Like, Corey is very, very unpredictable. He reminds me of a guy like even John Jones uh, that that still is understanding the game, and it's scary. You see, you know, the high striking output, seventh highest strike strikes landed per minute in the UFC with 5.93. Expert timing on big shots. He'll move to one side. He'll get you to follow. He'll get you right in direction. Of, of where you're at and he'll throw those flying knees. Very, very, very technical and very dangerous. Dangerous off his back as well. Dangerous off his back. Like I, I, I we were in the same car one time in uh, New York and I saw him and I'm just like, damn, the way he was able to tra uh, you know, transition from submission to submission, I just knew that a guy like Corey Sanhagen, Sanhagen really understands the bottom and the grappling game. But what is it that makes Corey good? Is right here. 
right there, ladies and gentlemen. His unpredictability, his unpredictable striking. He creates angles. But I do want to expose, I don't want to necessarily expose, but you know what? Let's get down to the weaknesses of Corey Sanhagen. He, he is tough, but he does absorb a lot of damage. Like he gives it, but he also takes it. You know, you watch the fight that he've had with uh, with a guy like Jan and a guy like uh, I want to say Sangi Dong, but I, you know, but Cor and, or with uh, with T.J. Dillashaw, the guy goes through wars, man, and that's something that you really want to be careful with. You know, his weaknesses. I, I don't. My producer, I am sorry, Corey, but I think you are tough. But maybe sometimes you're too tough for your own good. Maybe you will go to toe to toe with somebody a little too much and that could also get you in trouble because you are a technical and tactical fighter. And I think if you do have to bring the fight, you should bring it only if you're losing. You see what I'm saying? So maybe toughness could, I'm not saying you're not tough, but I think toughness could be, your, could be a weakness of yours just to hold your ground and just fight. You're wrestling. This is where I would take the fight and fight, fight Corey. It would be boring. And I'll tell you the exact same thing that I would do with Peter Yan. And I've said it before, you know, so it's out there. I'd wrestle the shit out of you. I really would. Why? Because I ain't trying to take a knee to my damn face. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do respect, and I do respect the game of it. And you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to fight me either. Because I developed some good top control too, with elbows and knees. And I'm vicious. Your durability. This right here has nothing to do with me. His name is Michael Wandsover. He, he's the one that said this, your durability. I think you're durable, but I do think overall, I think you are durable, but I think I, I go back and I watch that TJ fight and I watch that Peter Yon fight and I see there's, there's an opportunity for you to get be better with your gas tank with your threshold. If you really understand, uh, if you really understand, uh, start to really understand that and pinpoint that, I think I think Corey would be <sighs> good, but not as good as Triple C. Anyhow, whatever. Now let's take that. Now let's break it down to the tape. So let's start off with a little bit of Corey Sanhagen, and, and, and I will say this again, guys. And I don't know if I mentioned this in one of his strengths, but this man is very very tactical. He will start to set things up to get something bigger. You guys watch what I'm talking about. Boom, spinning back kick to the body. Misses. Marlon did the right thing, evaded. Could have taken his back. And then, bah, comes up to the head. Watch, look at his visual. Look at how he kept his eyes here. Pretty impressive, dude. They see eye to eye. Bah, and then grazed him. I almost feel like that was, uh, I, it don't take much. It seems like it was his calf that got it, but man, Marlon, yup. Set it up, looked at him, and then came back with that spinning kick there. Yup. Now watch, this is what I like about, look at that. But notice how he walked this way. Notice how he made half a moon. Boom. And then he starts walking this way, bah, and then times the knee. And walks it this way to eventually throw that knee and catch Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar followed him. Frankie Edgar could have probably maybe created space, but that's what it was. Elbows, yeah, throwing elbows down the middle. Bah. God, if I had longer elbows, I'd love to do that too. I got a 64 inch reach, but he's using every limb that he has in his body. Yeah, I mean, look at Song Don. I mean, that, that, that cut is no joke, dude. That'll take your vision. You know, catch you right. Imagine if that thing catches you right on the eyeball. It'd be ridiculous and I had to stop it. We just talked about Corey's strengths. Now let's get to his damn weaknesses. Let's go. You know, sometimes he, look, look defensively where he leaves his chin. He'll just stay there. This, this is the toughness that I was talking about with Corey. He'll just stay in the pocket. He'll stay in the pocket with a guy that that's also very, very dangerous. It's like, why prove a point? Look, look, look at your reach advantage. Yeah, Peter really impressed me in this fight. He really brought, uh, he really brought Corey into deep waters. He, he really tested his, uh, he really tested his threshold, his will. You know, another thing, you know, like uh, Aljamain came out, came out strong. 
Aljamain came out strong right away. Boom. Yup. Look at how Aljamain used the cage to eventually find, to eventually start finding and start looking for. Look at the look at what Aljamain did. It was actually pretty nice. He used that cage to wrap to get his lock in, and that was it. Corey. Uh, yeah, Corey, you should have been, you, sh you, sh you just, you should have just been protect yourself. You're better off going to your back off of a position like that. To me, this is Aljamain's best one right here. And then he was out. Well, yeah, his, he was just a little suspect there. But I got, I, everybody gets caught every once in a while. But this is also where Aljamain is really good. He's going to come out pressing everybody. He's going to come out and pressing me. He could have protected his chin. He could have did all that. But I for sure, I was wrong. I for sure thought Corey was going to beat him. But he did it. He came, he ran, he got his takedown. You got to survive it. You got to survive this round. Like if you know, you know, some people have really, really good back, back takes. Unless you can get out of that position very well. But if not, survival, protect, take those punches. You lost it. And now let's get back to the teletape. Who is it that he's going to win? Cheeto Vera or Corey Sanhagen? Let's go. Okay, so here we're going back to the tell the tape because right now I got to bet with my producer because overall, I think Cheeto Vera is very durable, but I just think technically and tactically, this man is better. If there's any how, there's any way that, that, uh, that Cheeto Vera could beat a guy like Corey Sanhagen, he's going to have to test his durability. He's going to have to really bring the fight to him because we saw in the TJ fight and we saw it in the Peter Yan fight, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it because he's just gonna strike. He doesn't have any of that wrestling. He doesn't have any of that wrestling threat. So for that reason, I have a bet with my producer, Michael Wanzover. I just do believe that Corey is just too experienced. I, I do believe his lateral movements. I, do, I, I just know he has more tricks in his bags. So Chido Vera, to go with your pussy tattoo, I am going to give you some nice ears to go with your Jaguar. And for that reason, I am going Corey Sanhagen by submission, by stoppage, or by decision. But I just see the experience that this dude has is going to be the biggest problem. And he's got a bag full of tricks of techniques, tactics. And the only way that I can see you beating him is really exposing his threshold, using and bringing that wrestling. But I just don't see it. So I got a bet with my producer, Michael Wands over you guys. A gum, TPM. I'll, I'll send you guys his address later. But I got a steak dinner for two at Steak 44 here in Phoenix if Corey Sanhagen wins. Anyhow, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C, and we will always deliver. Big shout out to our sponsor, Cookie Co's. Guys, when you guys want to indulge, especially you, Kelvin Gastelum, and you get high and you have the munchies, you guys make sure to find a Cookie Co store near you. Again, I am Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C, and we are out. So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember there's more breakdowns, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out.